Welcome to the M Factor Live, a space where art of movement meets wisdom of the heart. My name is M, and I am here this year to help you take your yoga practice to the next level. You are joining me at episode four of a series of live stream teachings that I have started online. And um, I hope you enjoy them. I hope my mission with these uh, live streams is to help you look at yoga from a little bit different angle. So sometimes we need a new perspective to look at things and you might learn some things that you have never thought about. And that is my mission for this year. I hope you enjoy this and um, ultimately we can create a dialogue between each other. So, this is episode four. If you have missed uh, an episode, you will be able to either rewatch them here on Facebook or I am also cross posting them on my YouTube channel. And um, sometimes you won't have time to really listen intensely. I think uh, these uh, little sessions are full with little wisdom nuggets and maybe you want to go back and listen to it when you have more time. Anyway, let me see who is there. I see Petra is already there from Germany. Hello. <laughs> That's wonderful. So I have to learn to interact a little bit better and I will do this. I have my glasses here just in case if I can't read it. So everything is prepared and I think I will get better and better at this. I enjoy this and I hope I can connect to more of you with these um, live teachings. So today, <clears throat> Um, I would like to ask you a question, <laughs> or maybe three or four. Have you ever been to a yoga class and you came into the room and you marched immediately all the way to the back and set up your yoga place, your yoga mat somewhere at a place where nobody can see you? <laughs> right? Have you ever been in a yoga class where you just looked around and you felt I can't do this. Why does everybody seems to be able to do this, but just not me? Anybody? <laughs> Who has ever started yoga all gung-ho, maybe at the beginning of a new year or, you know, at earlier times in your life and you went to class three months, six months, and then it kind of like fizzled out a little bit. Then somehow uh, life took over again and there were more priorities that were more important than going to class. All of a sudden life got so busy you couldn't go back to class anymore and it wasn't as regularly and um, you felt like you became a yoga dabbler. <laughs> and I'm saying this with all my love. We have a lot of yoga dabblers out there and maybe you are one of them. The people who go to class on and off and who I meet and they say to me, oh, I know I need to go back to yoga class <laughs> and I just don't have the time and there's so much stuff going on, but I wish I could go back to yoga class. Those are the yoga dabblers. So maybe that is something that you can connect to. So we have to ask ourselves, why do we get to that point? And I have the privilege of practicing and um, teaching a lot of people. And since I do a lot of private work, I ask the question, why do we feel the way we feel on the mat? I know usually there's no time for that in yoga class and it's not addressed there, but I think it is a very, very important part because without going inward, we won't be able to grow past that point of being a yoga dabbler who kind of like goes in and out and who enjoys the classes, but we're never really growing. And so, when I ask my students, why do we feel the way that we have to be in the back of the class, that we have to hide, that um, we feel like everybody else can do it and we can't. The reason for that is because deep within us, 
there's a voice that says, you just can't do it. I can't do it. And as long as this voice is there, we will not be able to create the atmosphere for growth. So ask yourself, when we are on the yoga class and on, the, on our mat, how can we change the dialogue that goes on within us from, I can't do this, or I don't know if I can ever do this, or I am the only one who can't do this, or I don't understand what I'm doing here. I feel like I am not following and everybody else is. How can we change that to a different dialogue that sounds a little bit more like, I am here to learn. I am on my mat in front of my teacher so that I can hear and I can receive and I can learn. The dialogue might be sounding something like, I give my best. I am okay with where I am in this moment in time. This is a dialogue that happens sometimes consciously and most of the time unconsciously within us on our mat, on our yoga mat. And I believe to dig within a little bit deeper and ask yourself the question, why do I feel the way I feel? Why do I think I can't do it? Why do I say I don't have time to practice? Because sometimes a practice could be just 15 minutes or sometimes a practice could be just sitting on your mat and breathing and being conscious of the present moment. That is yoga as well. And why do we sit and expect something that we might not be able to do in this point, but we expect it? So when we go to yoga class, I think the expectation is that everybody just follows what the teacher says in the front. But I have to ask, where does this expect expectation come from? If you have practiced your whole life, you might say, yes, I should be able to do downward facing dog and crow pose and dancer and all the other poses. But if you haven't practiced a lot, if you are just starting, if you are in your first year of yoga, we have to adjust our perspective a little bit. And so I ask my students, why do we have that expectation that we have to be able to do something? So I think these are really important questions that could help you look at yourself. When we are in yoga class, um, the teacher usually prepares um, uh, intention or an atmosphere where we can um, release where we can let go. I know I do this in my classes too, where we can uh, let go of the world uh, that is swirling in our energy. And that is not so easy. But the next step, and this is what I would love to want, want you to think about, is how can I prepare that atmosphere within myself as well? How can I set an intention for myself to not say, I can't do this, or to not say, why am I here? I will never be able to do this, to not be frustrated or disappointed, because I think that's the reason why a lot of us don't have a regular practice, something that gets us on the mat every single day something that we can do in yoga class, but something that we can also do at home in our own personal yoga practice at home, yeah? So I want you to know that I believe we all feel that way on our mat. I don't think there's a yogi out there who is on their mat and doesn't struggle with this. 
in some form or shape. Yeah? This depends on how long you have practiced, this depends on uh, where you are on your yoga journey and how much internal work you have done. But it is very important to understand that you are not alone. You're not the only one who feels this way. And although it looks like nobody else deals with this, I promise you, everybody deals with some form of uh, self-talk that we have to work on and overcome. Yeah, I think many of us, we take our worries onto the mat with us. Um, and these, these can be uh, things uh, that we go through in our family. This can be personal stuff. This can be things that we go through at work. And they don't allow us to create the focus and the concentration to really learn and grow. So it is worth it to ask this question, what is my self-talk on the mat? How do I step foot on my yoga mat when I go to class? Um, and is there somehow a way to change that self-talk? Yeah, um, I'm a big fan of journaling and writing down things. <laughs> I believe if you um, start practicing putting how you feel on the inside into words, I think it creates um, a lot of clarity. It will open up the fog and some of the clutter and the things why we don't understand ourselves really um, if you start to write down things. So I want to encourage you to maybe start a journal, to maybe put these questions out. Why do I feel I can't do these things on the mat? And why do I expect of myself that I need to be able to do them? because this is already where it starts. If my expectation cannot match reality, there's always going to be frustration. Yeah? And I want to help you with that this year. So maybe start thinking a little bit about the atmosphere of um, the thoughts in your mind that you prepare when you start your yoga practice and do this before you go to class. Yeah, maybe in the car, start to think about it. This is where your yoga st practice should start because um, remember it is body, mind and heart that want to come together on the mat. That's what true yoga is. So it's not just exercises, but it becomes something that goes way beyond just doing physical exercises on the mat. If we want to practice real yoga, there's a difference between practicing yoga and practicing Pilates or Zumba or uh, aerobics or some of the other wonderful uh, fitness classes that we can go to. There's a difference. And if you want to take your yoga practice to that next level, maybe this is a good direction to start thinking it thinking into. So I want to leave you with um, a song, a song of the day that uh, I really love. I don't want to tell you what it is yet because I know you will all recognize it or some of you will recognize it. And I want to sing this song and the words of this song um, to you. <laughs> I know um, it is written for a woman, but I do believe this is equally um, important for men to hear. I think we're not much different in that regard. And I think it is something that we should sing to ourselves. Yeah. Okay, so let me see if I can find it. And then maybe you can put in the comments what song it was. So instead of me writing down which song it was, um, you could um, put it into the comments uh, which song it is. All right, so let's see if I can do this. <clears throat> All right, ready? 
Oh, her eyes, her eyes make the stars look like they're not shining. Her hair, her hair fits perfectly without her trying. She's so beautiful, and I tell her every day. Yeah, I know, I know, when I compliment her, she don't believe it. It's so, it's so, sad to think that she don't see what I see. But every time she asks me, do I look okay, I'll say. When I see your face, there's not a thing that I would change. Cause you're amazing. Just the way you are And when you smile The whole world stops and stares for a while Cause girl you're amazing Just the way you are I know, you know that song. <laughs> the words of the song. Thank you, Bruno Mars, for writing this song for us. This is what we need to hear. This is what our soul needs to hear. And I know it's not that easy to just sing the song and say to ourselves, we are amazing, if we don't feel like it. But it is a start and it changes the conversation in our head. And that's one of the biggest reasons why we practice yoga, to change the conversation in our head, to quieten down the chatter and to take that that is not serving us anymore and try to transform it to something magical that is serving us. Yeah. So, this is the song that I want you to sing to yourself. Yeah, this is homework. <laughs> Get the song, um, listen to it. Get the lyrics out, read them if you don't know the song. We are all amazing. And while, of course, we live in a world where we hear this here and there, I think it is important that we learn to say this to ourselves. Yeah. So this is going to be homework for today. I hope you enjoy this. So let me see one more time if I can see if somebody is there. Oh, yes. Knut is there. Vicky is there. Elizabeth is there. Wonderful. Petra. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for watching. <laughs> I get all emotional. Okay. This is what we want. We want to connect with each other. Yeah. Leave me something in the comments. Put your questions in there. Yeah. Let me know if this is helpful and um, if this is interesting to you. So um, until then, I will say goodbye and I will see you next time. <laughs>